Aw, oh, man. There's something I'm supposed to be doing. What is it? It feels like it's important. Oh, it, dumbass, breathe! <laughs> So remember last month when I talked about Paleosaniwa and I said that it was the bandit of the Hell Creek Formation? I wasn't wrong, but I did leave out the fact that there may have been another animal prone to thievery in the region. Because there was a dinosaur here that was part of a family that was literally stereotyped for their acts of stealing from others. This was Anzu Wileyi, the demon bird of Cretaceous North America. Unlike a lot of dinosaurs, Anzu is actually known from numerous fossil specimens that give us a good idea of what it looked like. With two partial skeletons and a whole sleuth of other remains, this dinosaur made history as the first well-preserved example of an oviraptorid in North America. For reference, the closely related Hagriffus was only described in 2005, and the remains we have of it are just a single hand. Not much can be said about most of this dinosaur's anatomy, as it had a typical ostrich-like frame that all oviraptorids had. However, Anzu also had one of the largest crests out of all of its relatives. The purpose of this paper-thin crest was unknown for some time, but it's likely that it was used as a display structure. Males would likely use this crest, along with elaborate-looking feathers, to attract females during the breeding season, much like how a modern-day peacock displays its tail feathers. From these old remains, paleontologists gave the animal the genus and species name Anzu Wileyi. The genus name comes from a Mesopotamian demon who's often depicted as a giant bird who can breathe both fire and water. That said, some artwork of Anzu depicted him as a massive lion-headed eagle. Oh yeah, I totally see it. One thing I find interesting is that, in the mythology, Anzu was born in the pure waters of both the Abzu and the Earth. In real life, Anzu didn't seem to stray too far from rivers either, as their fossils have been found in mudstone rocks. This type of stone is known to be the base of ancient floodplains, and it was theorized that this was the animal's preferred habitat. In this area of Hell Creek, Anzu would have likely thrived on an omnivorous diet. Despite what you may think, the primary diets of oviraptorids were not eggs. They 100% could have eaten eggs on occasion, but these dinosaurs actually had a wide-ranging diet that could include anything from plants to hard-shelled mollusks. Anzu would have likely fed on plants like leaves, fruit, and seeds, but they likely wouldn't pass up any chance to eat meat. And they definitely have the power to catch and kill small animals if they needed to. Like all oviraptorids, Anzu had a toothless beak, but that doesn't mean it was harmless. You see, there was a study done on the reconstructed jaws of several oviraptorids to estimate their bite strength. The results showed that these animals had a very high bite force, and their jaws were stronger than other herbivorous theropods such as Therizinosaurids. In fact, one oviraptorid in this study had a bite strength of 500 newtons, which is roughly 112 psi. Now, you need 1,700 psi to cleanly snap a human femur, but that is still a strong bite force that can still shatter the bones in your hand. Now, while it wasn't used in this study, Anzu was a little different from these oviraptorids. The beak of this dinosaur was longer and had a sharper edge than most of its relatives. They also had unique jaw muscles that allowed them to move their lower jaw in a front-to-back motion, which allowed them to shear through tough vegetation. This slicing beak could also help them take out small animals if times got tough, and definitely would not be a good place to stick your hand. And the thing about being an Anzu? Every single day was a fight for survival. This formation isn't called Hell Creek for nothing, as this region was packed full of predators. As you know, this region was home to Tyrannosaurus rex, and while they likely would have preferred going after larger animals like Edmontosaurus or Triceratops, 
they wouldn't pass up grabbing a hell chicken for dinner. Hell Creek was also home to the Dromaeosaurids Akiraraptor and Dakotaraptor, who were likely the natural predators of Anzu. In case you're curious, raptors take down their prey by latching onto their target's back with their sickle claws, flapping their wings to stabilize themselves, and using their wings to bite and tear off flesh in strips. And the truly sinister thing about raptors is that this line from Jurassic Park may actually be correct. You are alive start to eat you. And if a baby Anzu grows up to be an adult, you're looking at the lucky one or two from the clutch. This is because the hatchlings can easily get grabbed by a Paleocinewa, Pectinodon, and potentially even a bold enough Avisaurus. Even taking a drink wasn't safe in this region, as it was home to three kinds of crocodilians, as well as the croc-like Champsosaurus. With so many animals that see it as a walking chicken tender platter, who's to say that Anzu itself wasn't as dangerous as some of its predators? If you look at modern animals who have a lot of predators, you'll often notice how they can become incredibly aggressive if they feel threatened. A common example is zebras, who are often hunted by numerous different animals and have been infamous for causing the most injuries to zookeepers. And with how many predators it had, it seems likely that Anzu would be just as aggressive. There's even some specimens that show evidence of injuries, such as broken ribs and torn tendons. Now, while there is a chance that this was caused by a predator, there's also the possibility that these injuries were caused by another Anzu, likely being two males who were fighting over a mate. It's likely that this animal would attack in a similar way to modern rat-type birds, such as emus and cassowaries. Anzu would likely kick and peck at whatever they perceive as a threat until it either runs for its life, or it lies down and never gets up. If you were to survive, you'd likely suffer from deep lacerations, bruises, puncture wounds, and severe bleeding. And if the Anzu bites or slashes at a major artery, you'd slowly bleed out until eventually, you die of blood loss. And y'all thought this demon turkey was as funny as a jester, but no, in reality it's closer to the Joker. Now, like all modern animals, Anzu would usually be calm, and would likely be more inclined to run than fight. But if you get on the bad side of the chicken from hell, all I can say is, may God have mercy on your soul. But that is the end of the line for this video. Don't forget to like and comment on this video as it lets YouTube know that people like this content and want to see more. Once again, thank you guys so much for subscribing, especially now that we're at 650 subscribers. Oh my god. Dear god, if we get to a thousand subscribers by December, my head's just gonna explode. Well, that's it for now. See you around.